In today's video, I plan on surviving 100 days in one block Minecraft, but there is a catch. You see, I went in and added some mods. Now, I'm sure that you've seen a whole lot of these 100 day one block videos, but before you click off, hear me out. I added some pretty sick mods. I got new fences, garage doors. Wait, wait, no, no, that's that's not the cool stuff. Hold on. How about giant swords, upgraded netherite? More garage doors? What? No, no, no. Get that guy out of here. We got full military grade weaponry, which ends up causing some issues and and believe it or not, some people actually think I'm kind of funny, so you know, maybe you will too. For these 100 days, I have a few goals. As always, kill Donkey's wife from Shrek, get approved for the Air Force, get a diamond printing Paxel, make a nice looking place to live, and lastly, show my true American side on day 100. Here we are, day one starting off on a single block, and what did we do to start? Well, you know, we punched it. I mean, are you, are you surprised? Now, after getting some exciting dirt, we got our first piece of wood. Now, my main goal for the first day was to just smack the block expand our platform and actually make an animal pen now we got our first chest and got two apples and two seeds so i mean honestly pretty lame but i guess the seeds were good so we can get some sustainable food for the near future the next thing was expanding the island just a little bit now i started off by making a crafting table followed by some wood slabs and then boom we expanded now i wanted to use slabs over just normal blocks because i got six slabs per three wood planks instead of you know just three wood planks which means we're getting double the amount of building blocks now after our tiny bit of expansion we got our first piggy friend and our first look at one of our mods that being a mod that gives variety to all friendly mobs like chickens pigs and cows so yeah we got uh we got some variety you know we're not uh we're uh we're, we're inclusive here if you if you know what i'm saying now the next mod i got to utilize was the paxel mod which was by far my favorite mod for this entire playthrough i made a wooden pickaxe wooden shovel and wooden axe and made this beautiful thing now i know a lot of you watching this are like super smart genius rgb gamers with uh with your strands of uh rgb lights around your room so you might already know what this does but for those of you who you know aren't those sick rgb gamers it's, it's basically the godsend of one block because you know it's like a three-in-one special you know you get the axe pickaxe and the shovel i know shocker but what this means is you never have to change your tool when you're mining your block which is one of the most annoying things if you've ever played one block now the next thing we had to do was make what i call an animal closet and to do this I made a little box slapped some doors on it and pushed our pig right in there until he got some friends and his first friend was another pig and then a cow a sheep and lastly a chicken and I gotta say whenever I push chickens in Minecraft I always feel like they're giving me attitude towards the end of day one we got our first benevolent gift which gave us some more food saplings and most importantly a grass block which meant we could spread grass to all our dirt blocks for when we got our animal farms up after the chest it was time to upgrade to the underground phase and unlike the last time i wanted to ensure that we had enough time to finish all our goals that i set at the beginning so we weren't messing around this time now in this new phase the first thing i did was making a new stone paxel which was amazing then we got not one but two mushrooms which meant we now had infinite food once we had some bowls made and to finally end day one off we killed our first zombie who had a sick hat and made me more jealous than i care to admit also if this seems slow don't worry the pace of this video will definitely speed up and you'll get to see all the cool mods but I always like to give you guys a detailed start so you can really see where we start and then compare it to where we eventually end up. At the beginning of day two, we mined 401 blocks, which was quite a bit more than I had expected. And the majority of day two was centered around planting and cutting down oak trees and then expanding our island. Just like the last time I decided on a circular theme, which is always way harder, but like, I just think it looks sick. So like, I can never stop myself. And I always regret it later until I see the final product. But let me tell you, building on circles, I, I hate it, but I, I also love it. It's weird. Okay. It's like math, you know, like, you know, in math, like you obviously hate it until like you can like easily do stuff. And then it's really satisfying to do math. Like if you, if you've ever understood math, it's actually enjoyable. I know, I know it sounds stupid, but I, I swear to you, it's true. I decided to spend our two iron on shears. And I know that may sound kind of stupid, but there's two reasons why one, we can now get a bed without killing our precious sheep. And two, some of these mods utilize wool. So getting shears now will just help us out later. Once I had the shears, I hopped in the animal closet it robbed the sheep of their wool and left without even saying thank you now i kind of felt bad for the animals at this point because i had them trapped in a tiny closet but you know soon enough they'd have a nice area to live in i mean they're living for free you know so they just deal with it. if it's free deal with it okay and lastly with our newfound wool i made a nice comfy bed and slept the night away alone just like every other night of my life the next day started off by dealing with this chicken and after dealing with him i chopped some trees and continued mining the one block now while 
while mining, two zombies came out and tried to smack me around, so I showed them what an angry waffle was capable of and moved on with my day. Now, at this point, I realized that I could make some better weaponry, so I took some of my new wool, made some handles, and then turned a handle and some cobblestone into a nice sable. Unfortunately, it was made of stone instead of light, and if you don't understand what I'm getting at, I was hoping this thing would be a lightsaber, but it was just a sword made of rocks. So, you know, not, not quite as cool as a, as a laser sword that can uh, cut through someone like Swiss cheese, but I, I guess I guess we'll take it. Now, the reason I went with a saber over the much more common rapier is because of the fact that a lot of mobs spawned with helmets, which would take away the bonus damage from the rapier, while the saber got a bonus if they just didn't have any chest armor. And after the saber was made, the rest of the day was spent expanding our island with another circle structure. Days four through six started off with me making a simple little tree farm because for what I had planned, we were going to need a whole lot of wood and not the fun kind that's found in the morning. Now at the beginning here, I honestly wasn't going for anything too crazy when it came to looks, but by the end of our 100 days, I definitely spiced things up and well, let's just say things on day 100 get like a little explosive and like fiery, and, but you, you know, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Earlier on in the day, I had laid out a little farm area and all the dirt turned into straight poopy grass, which was disgusting. Like it literally looks like someone ate three different kinds of chili and just puked all over the ground and was like, yeah, you know what? That looks good. Let's, let's throw that into Minecraft and we'll, we'll make it a nice grass block. And what made things even worse was the fact that I couldn't even hoe the dirt to like change it back to normal dirt so I had to break and replace every single dirt block and now normally this wouldn't be a huge issue but when you're living right above an endless void you tend to lose a lot of blocks you mine which meant we lost a lot of our dirt which is kind of precious early on here which really sucked however to start my farm I planted some carrots and seeds and then chopped even more trees now at this point I had added a tree cutting mod and I was having some issues with it because I being the smart genius player that I am was holding shift while chopping the tree and well, when you're not dumb like me and you use the mod correctly, you're supposed to be able to cut a tree a whole lot faster. But, you know, again, since I'm such a smart, genius RGB gamer with my uh, gamer chair and my mechanical keyboard, I don't learn this for a couple days. However, once I did finally chop the tree down, I got more wood rained on me than a lot of actresses on a certain website. Uh, you know, the one it's got that it's got like the most exposing intro song on the planet you know dun 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 yeah i yeah you know no you some of you sickos know exactly what i'm talking about and oh man a lot, a lot of us are down bad huh anyways after some more mining i got in a bit of a scrap with some skeletons and was just trying not to smack the wolf that was sitting right in front of me in the middle of the fight now one of them even tried to party with my farm animals so after giving him the good old one two i made the wolf a little closet for him to just relax and you know I made sure to keep them separate because I know these guys get a little a little claustrophobic and will start eating everybody So I figured he could have his own room once we killed another skeleton I decided it was time to smelt down some iron and make ourselves an iron paxel Which was basically like Christmas because this thing mined way faster and our day ended in some violence after a snow fox Broke into my nice closet hotel and murdered every single one of my chickens and bunnies Which was tragic day seven was a bit of an eventful one. We started out by getting a frozen chest with some bone stuff in it followed by another closet doggo a whole ass polar bear spawned in and I gotta admit I swear I thought I was gonna push this guy straight off trying to like make him his own little room but we actually didn't which again surprised me a little while later I nearly died to some skeletons and the only reason I survived was because one of them shot the other one which led to a good old-fashioned Western duel now after the duel I of course cheap shot at the last one and moved on with my day I should also mention that while this is not set to hardcore it is locked on hard mode so we still took as much damage as normal hardcore now a third doggo spawned a little later and I decided it was finally time to tame one of these things and it only took us two bones which is honestly pretty lucky because I swear sometimes it takes like six and it'll always take like six when you only got like four bones you know like you'll be exploring your world and you'll have like four bones from killing a couple skeletons and you find a dog and you're like, yo let me get this at this point I was hoping for a relaxing rest of the day but was instead greeted with a surprise birthday party from a bunch of rude mobs it honestly wasn't all that hard and i even got to spark kick one of them straight into the void to go hang out with all my lost dirt so that was pretty fun and to end day seven off i tamed some more wolves and just mined a little bit more days eight through ten started off with some nice 
peaceful mining. Well, I mean, until it wasn't. These stupid skeletons were some of the most rude house guests I had ever met in my whole life. And they even shot one of my doggos, which was not a nice thing to do. And, well, a, you know, fortunately, he got himself a bone to chew on, while I, on the other hand, was taken down to a single heart fighting the other skeleton. However, after killing him, I got an almost undamaged iron helmet, which, for one, I didn't even know was possible to get helmets this, you know, intact. And two, uh, you know, waffles have really soft heads. So, like, we, we really like nice helmets because they, they, uh, they keep the arrows from sticking straight through you. So, you know, waffles do enjoy helmets, believe it or not. After the attack, I realized that I could use a better shield. So, I decided it was time to spend some more of our precious iron and make a nice iron shield. And lads, I, man, I know I always say this, but we were just looking so snazzy. Like, so snazzy. Like, at this point, I'm going to have to come out with some snazzy merch just to match myself in Minecraft. And so, you guys can match yourself with my snazziness as well. Now, during our mining, we got a fancy chest that honestly didn't have very good loot in it at all. Good news was that we were now upgrading to the ocean phase and I was really excited for this phase because I knew for sure this time that I wanted to make some kind of aquarium. A lot of time in this set of days consisted of expanding the island even more and of course I maintained the circle theme of the island which which just made building platforms a whole lot harder but it's worth it in the long run. I even did a nice little connecting path which was honestly the most annoying thing I've ever built in a while but you know we got it done and at the end of 10 days we had ourselves a nice set of platforms. However it looked way too bland so I ended up spending the next 10 days just chopping a ton of wood adding even more platforms and putting a basic border around all my beautiful circles and by the end this is what we set up so far. Now honestly like just adding that simple border makes it look so much better so I'm definitely glad we did this and I, I think it was very much worth it. The first thing I did in the next couple days was finally making some freaking bowls because we had an infinite food source and I was not taking advantage of it. Like, like, wh wh what am I doing, man? So boom, now we were stealing the milk from these cows. And if you ever have mushrooms in any sort of survival world, you gotta take advantage of these because the food is great and it's infinite. You know, the only drawback is the amount of inventory space it takes up, which gets really annoying, especially in a one block because you get such a wide variety of blocks during each phase. So your inventory fills up really fast but still very much worth it right after stealing the cow milk or I guess mushroom stew that comes straight out of them which is kind of weird uh, I smacked around some roided up octopi and you know what hold up can we can we just talk about like the idea if you could like breed animals like mushrooms in real life like imagine if you could just like breed cows to just produce straight chocolate milk you know like how nice would that be from one of the chests I got some ice which I decided to big brain and make an infinite water source after waiting a while I realized that the ice wasn't gonna melt by itself until I slapped some torches next to it and I, man I can't even lie I was far too proud of this even though looking back it, it's a pretty simple move and that's obviously why they give you the ice you know and the chests but I was happy but like I said I, I was I was far too proud and I felt like an absolute genius next thing we did was starting our aquarium now I thought it'd be really cool to make it in one of these open circle areas which ended up looking pretty awesome by the end of the video but oh boy filling this thing was amazingly tedious like as a kid I always thought that like making your own pool would be super easy because you know you just kind of like dig a big hole and then dump water in there but I, th that is far from the truth even in Minecraft like not only is it hard in Minecraft but last summer my friends and I were at the lake and we made like a three foot deep hole and I kid you not it took four of us over an hour to fill the thing up with two buckets speaking of difficult things making you guys subscribe to the channel is like impossible less than two percent of you guys are subscribed but I think we could get a lot higher so if you have liked any of my other videos or you think I'm remotely funny during this one please consider subscribing I'm not gonna say it again I'll probably throw up these little reminders throughout the video but anyways one drawback of making my entire platform out of slabs was the fact that catching these fish was so much harder than it needed to be because half the time I would try and use the water bucket on them to you know catch them in a bucket I would just instead place the water under the slab which was very counterproductive because not only did I not catch 
the fish. But I had to find out what slab I threw it under. And, you know, you obviously can't see the water. So it's just a guessing game. Our first enemy encounter was one of my least favorite mobs in the game. A guardian. Like, this thing just looks like it should be like an old lady from SpongeBob. And I know that might not make sense. But, like, you, you just gotta trust me. After some more mining, I decided it was time to make a bow and a bunch of arrows. Because I knew for a fact that a mob party was coming soon. And a bow was vital for our survival. Because those big giant guardians are not fun to face now you you remember how i just talked about how difficult catching these fish were yeah this puffer fish was a prime example of my struggle okay i could not for the life of me catch this thing and it ended up getting munched by my doggo because it, it booped him and that sucked because i wanted that thing in my aquarium these days ended off with us getting what i believe was our second diamond at the time and that led to day 24 oh boy day 24 is a rough one and i just well i guess let you know what let's just get into it for starters our dolphin friend that we were trying to save apparently didn't like me enough to the point that he just hopped straight off which kind of hurt the ego a little bit but you know that's, that's all right because now we had to face one of the most frustrating monster parties of my life it all started off with me smacking around some guardians and then i realized that i caught a nice big fish in my aquarium which i thought was actually kind of funny i eventually bowed that thing down and after this things started to go downhill now, i thought i'd killed most of the mobs at this point but apparently that wasn't the case because right when i hopped in the aquarium i was instantly greeted with three drowned alongside a guardian and boom i not only died once twice five six seven eight nine times no 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 that would not be enough i died 10 whole times double digits until i finally killed that last round and like look at how many tridents were stuck in my aquarium like it, it made the thing look like i just eradicated all of atlantis when in reality i fought three rounds you know so that that just shows you how many times i died right there also i should mention the floating chest thing was basically tombstones from the quark mod which were honestly really nice to have but again i mean just look at this chat log of my deaths man that that right there once again the ego is getting just absolutely shattered day 25 was pretty much the last few days all thrown into one i failed to save yet another dolphin killed a soggy zombie actually saved a squid this time and nearly died to another guardian and wait whoa 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 turn turn that back look at the hops on this dude like like what how is that possible days 26 through 29 started off with us upgrading to the jungle dungeon phase which meant that we were about to get some bitches finally oh Oh, wh whoopsies. Witch witches. We're getting witches, which, well, that that's not as fun. Since we upgraded once again, I figured it was finally time to make a little area for the farm animals, you know, to get them out of the closets for their whole life. And after I had a basic entrance made, I just blocked off three different areas for sheep, cows, and pigs since all of our chickens died. However, tragedy almost struck because after I had the cows in their pen, I realized that not only was there a creeper four blocks away from me, but the border of my platform was only one block high, which meant that the cows could just hop up and leave the enclosure which they promptly did because why would they obey the law of the land right like why would they do that why would they be nice once i had all the animals in it was time to finally use our single grass block to spread the grass throughout the dirt of the animal enclosures i honestly only needed this for the sheep for them to grow their wool back but i figured it'd look nicer if everyone had nice green grass the next day it was time to make yet another paxel because i get to spare you guys all the time i spent chopping wood and making a bunch of my new adjustments days 30 and 31 started off with a fight against a midget you know I'd, I'd probably be just as mad as him if I was that small so like I guess I don't blame him too much now after the midget fight I was trying so hard to tame a cat but I clearly was awful at it because the thing chose to die rather than being friends with me just like that dolphin so you know rough video so far when it comes to uh, saving animals but anyways a little while later we made a new panda friend and fortunately this guy found me bare bearable enough to hang out on the island get it bearable panda bear was that honey to you are you do you hate me now i i would i would to be honest with you i would relying on puns at this point gee what what happened what happened to me like any good friend i made mr panda bear a nice closet made of cobblestone because that's just what good friends do now would i recommend you do that to your friend no probably not because your friend nor the police would probably like you know you locking up people in an unopenable closet but hey i you know towards the end of day 30 some of those dumb witches spawn and were really earning the name that i gave them earlier because after i gave one a high five to the face they had the audacity 
ability to go and poison one of my dogs. Now, fun fact about my doggos is they, uh, they don't actually like being poisoned. And mine decided to go bite that big sausage nose off of the witch's face, which only seemed fair. Now, while mining the block on day 31, a midget party spawned, and these guys were absolutely furious about the fact that I smacked around their friend earlier. So they sent a whole gang to come after me. I know I said Guardian was like one of the most annoying mobs. These might take the cake. I mean, like, they might be my least favorite mob in the game because not only do they hit hard, but they also like face through walls and like wait till you can't find them anymore to come sneak attack you like it's the 1960s in Vietnam and the trees are talking to you and just it's just terrifying. After taking care of the mob party, I made an expansion for the new guest in my famous Panda Closet Hotel and found a diamond right afterward as a reward for my amazing accommodations. Outside of that, the rest of the day was just spent mining the one block, which again was just amazing just because we had the Paxel mod. I, I, this is a fantastic mod, seriously. At this point, I decided that I wanted to make a nice mob farm. So that is exactly what I did over the next six days. Now, to start out, I had to pick a spot on where I wanted to build a thing. And I actually ended up filling in an empty circle that my platform design indirectly created. Now, I chose to do this rather than make it on one of my existing ones because I already had some plans for the rest of the circles. Now, once I had the platform all filled in, I started the construction of the actual farm. And since I didn't have any iron for the hoppers, I just threw in some filler blocks on the bottom and moved on. Now I'm sure most of you have either built or seen this exact mob farm about 7,000 times, right? So I'm not even going to bore you with the details and how this works and how I made it. So let's just go full speed run mode. Just know that I basically placed a whole lot of wood, chopped a whole lot of trees, was blown up once trying to sleep the night away, underestimated how much wood I would actually need, and ended up with a dual color farm and finished it off by slapping some trap doors and water. And we had officially finished our mob farm. Days 38 through 43 started out with us grinding our new mob farm just to make sure everything was all in working order, and it was. After that, it was time to work on a nice big storage room, and I planned on using a mod here that just makes storage so much more aesthetically pleasing, which you guys will see here very soon. Now, I always regret going with a circular shape on my builds because I don't like making circular buildings. However, here I am again because, well, I'm, I'm stupid. During day 40, I decided to make a chisel, which then allowed me to make cobblestone bricks which saved me an absolute ton of coal because I didn't have to smelt down the stone to get the bricks and you know I again I don't I don't have that type of I don't have that type of coal bro like who do, who do I look like Jeffrey Bezos like do I look like I got the money to, to burn myself up into space no no I'm, I'm, a, I'm a broke waffle okay let's be honest after chiseling all my cobblestone I filled in the walls of the storage room and I decided to use cobblestone rather than wood because everything on my island at this point was wood and I just needed some sort a variety at this point. Once all the interior walls were put up, it was time to fill the storage area with actual cabinets. And this is the mod I am talking about. Like these things are amazing. Not only do they look really clean, they hold an absolute ton of resources. And really the only drawback is the fact that they can only hold one type of material. But what makes them even cooler is the fact that you can upgrade them with some pretty cool things, which we actually end up doing unlike the Aether Dragon eggs from last video. I know, trust me, I know, I, I forgot to do those. I know. Now came the fun part of the video, the sorting. Yay! This first wall I wanted to solely be attributed to wood, and I must say it actually came out looking pretty nice. And I promise you guys, I'm definitely going to be using this mod in the future because it just, you can make some awesome storage rooms if you don't have the resource struggle like I do in this one block. But even with my resource limitations, it, it still looks pretty darn good. Now, a large portion of this chunk of days consisted of me role playing as Paul Bunyan because these storage drawers did take quite a bit of wood to make. And to be fair, I mean, it made sense because these things could store over 2,000 items in it. Days 44 through 50 was a whole lot of mining, and I mean a lot. Like, we eventually got our benevolent chest, and this was by far the best one solely because it had two diamonds in it, which is, you know, you can never complain about diamonds. And you know what benevolent chests mean at this point. A new phase. While waiting for the phase, I went and played some footsies with all the mobs in the mob farm. And I'm just going to say now, throughout most of these days, I would go and clear the mob farm for like 30 seconds and then go back to what I was doing but I'm not gonna say that every time I do it 
just because it'd get really repetitive. So just so you guys know. And on day 45, I decided it was time to make our second farm area. And I know I basically had infinite food, but I just, I really like the look of farms and I always enjoy building them, even if I don't end up using them. Now for the first plant, I decided to use potatoes and I genuinely do not think anyone will guess what the other plant I use is. I mean, I'm sure one person will get it. Either they'll cheat or you just, you're smart. Anyways though, last chance to guess, sweet berry bushes. I used sweet berry bushes and I, I know what you're thinking here. Why would you ever want to plant such a bad crop that first of all, doesn't feed you very well and second of all, literally hurts you when you touch it. And you know my answer for that? I don't know. But like really, I looking back on this, I don't know. I have no comeback. I just, I just never really planted them before. So I figured I'd make a farm for once. That being said, I do think it is time for a little island tour here. So let's get a cinematic shot going. And I mean, at this point, I was pretty happy so far. Really, I just need to finish up the storage room, finish the aquarium, upgrade all the storage drawers, and honestly, quite a bit more building. So I made it sound like we don't have that much to do, but in reality, we have uh, quite a bit to do still. So, you know, I guess that's a good thing. Now to do what I had planned, we were going to need some specific blocks. And the only way we were gonna be able to get them is if we mine the one block. So we mine the one block. Now I do always like to take breaks from mining. And when I did choose to take my break, I decided to work on the one block area more now the design was nothing too crazy but i think it got the job done i also made sure to throw in my trap door door i know that sounds weird but that's what it is for my original one block video just so we had a place to run if mob parties got a bit too rowdy on day 48 we got our first villager friend terry who i promptly put into a boat to protect him from his own stupidity a little while later a group of four husks came and tried to slap me around later that same day we faced our first mob mob party in what felt like forever and it was prime time to test out my patented defense system and it was effective as ever. I literally got to live the dream of every drive through worker ever, right? I got to smack the sh out of rude customers and have no consequences whatsoever and i mean honestly this is like a dream for basically anyone that's dealt with rude customers regardless of the job so like it, it was nice we then kidnapped our second villager and wow this mob farm is loud to end off day 50 i planted some sugarcane and bamboo now my plan was to basically make walls of this around each of my farms which actually ends up looking really good but for now we just had to make our humble little farms to get it all started during the next five days the plan was to finish up these sugarcane farm and prepare for and start the nether phase so we first planted all the sugarcane we had and then began prepping the spawn area for the nether phase now see when you make an entire island out of wood you tend to be a bit afraid of a phase that spawns a literal firebenders so you know it's, it's always a good idea to be prepared we actually didn't end up having enough cobblestone to finish off the safety box but i just said screw it and left the opening which basically meant i was choosing aesthetics over the safety of my entire island but hey, I mean, what's what's the worst that can happen? You know, just like your whole island burning down, I guess, maybe? Yeah, we, you know, we could, we could figure it out when we get there if it happens. Once we had our incomplete safety box finished, it was time to start mining and we were gonna be doing a lot of it. Our first visitors ended up being some angry piglins who were promptly shut down by my trap door. And then we found our first ancient debris. I ended up having to make a diamond pickaxe to mine it, but we were now one step closer to some nice netherite gear. Now I also just decided to upgrade the pickaxe pickaxe to a diamond paxel which was always exciting a tad bit later we found another ancient debris and then a little after that we got a panda spawn egg which was pretty useless but i mean it's always cool to get items like that we then fought some baconators which i found to be the only mob that could hit me through my patented drive through window you no know, outside ranged mobs of course and the next day started off by meeting this little guy i i don't know what it is about striders but like they're just honestly so ugly that they're almost cute like i can't really explain it but i 
I just hope that people look at me like the way I look at Striders because that would benefit me quite a bit, let me tell you. We were then faced with our first gas, which was actually really underwhelming because the thing just suffocated in the walls of my cube. So, I mean, get outplayed. And we got the Uneasy Alliance achievement. Honestly, that name doesn't really make sense though to me because like, who am I in alliance with, right? Like, you know, because I know for sure it ain't talking about my relationship with these explosive shooting gas. Day 53 ended off with us getting yet another piece of ancient debris. And then the next day, a mob party appeared. And this was a bit scary, but not for the traditional reasons. Now, obviously, most mobs couldn't even hit me. So the big scary issue was actually the fact that one lucky shot from a blaze could light my entire island on fire. Fortunately, I had a bow, so we were able to avoid that. However, when fighting some more blazes later that day, disaster struck. While bowing it down, the thing was able to squeeze a couple shots through. Not only hit me, but also hit my storage room, which had me panicking to put it out. Now, I actually had some pretty fast reflexes and thinking to throw the water bucket to get that last flame that was just out of my reach. But overall, I was just happy that my place didn't turn out like present day California. So I guess that's a win. Some more mining commenced and an infernal chest spawned, which had two nether scraps and a wither skull. In all my one block experience, this was by far the best chest I'd ever gotten. And the next day we got yet another infernal chest. And this time we were given yet another wither skull and more importantly, a lava bucket, which meant we could finally make a cobblestone generator. And by the end of day 55, we had finally reached the upgrade block. At this point, I had to make the decision between using my lava bucket for either an iron golem farm or a cobblestone farm. And I ended up choosing the iron farm. So let's get into how we made this thing. For starters, I didn't want a massive eyesore on my island. So I decided to put it under the storage room. I will say though, making this ladder downwards was honestly awful because I just felt like I was going to die the whole time. But once we were down far enough, it was time to make the platform for where our villagers and zombies would be staying. Once the platform was made, I went to kidnap the villagers and throw them in their glass boxes. Now this is always a scary task because villagers can barely survive on their own in a normal world, let alone one where they can just fall straight to their deaths. So I, I mean like I never trust them because they're just so stupid. When I finally got them all in their boxes, I gave them some high quality beds. Owen decided he wanted to be difficult and you know block the spot for his bed so I had to smack him so I could just put the damn thing down. The last thing we needed for this portion was a zombie so it was now operation finesse a zombie into falling into a hole without dying honestly you know the, the name could use a little work but we're just gonna run with it before we started our mission we needed to mine for a bit more iron because we didn't have enough for an anvil yet eventually once we had enough we made our nice little anvil and i ended up naming the zombie after our first ever patreon supporter sombre if you guys want a chance to make appearances like this be sure to go check out my patreon anyways after activating our cool trap card operation finesse a zombie into falling into a hole without dying was complete. Wow, that's a mouthful. It was then that I realized that I had built this thing too high. Let me tell you this, my, I was just so angry at myself. So what I did was basically went down to the proper height this time and replicated the entire platform right below and then just broke out the blocks beneath them and hoped that they wouldn't somehow fall and die, which they didn't. After that, we built a pushy water slide platform followed by what I call the bowl of death. We then filled said bowl and now had an operational iron farm. To finish the farm off, I built some nice tall windows and can now watch the iron golems burn to their death like an absolute psychopath and to end day 70 off i made the upgrades for the cabinets and the first one i chose to do was the illumination upgrade which basically just lit up all the display items and made them look way better than before and they were really cheap to do so i figured i might as well do it days 71 and 72 consisted of me just upgrading every cabinet with the illumination upgrade and almost wanting to quit and you will see why now following our upgrades i adjusted the iron golem storage area now fitting it with cabinets which looked a lot nicer and provided a whole lot more storage and i even threw on the emerald storage upgrade which basically meant we were never going to run out of space in this thing which was awesome after messing with the iron farm i was on my way back to the top of my island when a creeper went and blew me up and at first man i, I thought my entire like villager area was going to be destroyed and like my iron farm that i just spent so much time on was ruined but really the only inconvenience was just losing my levels and having to fix the ladder so we got lucky there now the last thing we did was finally making a set of iron armor don't ask me why i waited 70 days i just i just did and we finally had armor and i guess i mean i didn't have enough iron for the iron armor before so it kind of made sense and to this point i just had been wearing armor from the mob farm which was honestly terrible and of course right as i was throwing all of the old crappy armor away a skeleton snuck up on me and ended up killing me because i had no shield and no armor on i honestly don't even know where the thing could have spawned but needless to say today was a rough day.
great for me. Definitely was not one of my favorites. Day 73, I finally decided to smelt down all of my ancient debris. While those were burning, I crafted a netherite ingot with our existing scrap, made a smithing table, and finally upgraded our diamond saber into a netherite saber. Outside of that, I just farmed my farms and breeded our animals. I specifically wanted a lot of cows because we were going to need to make our enchanting room pretty soon here, and for that, you need leather. The last thing we did was finally making the time to light up our entire island. I was so sick of getting schmobbed on when I didn't instantly sleep the nights away, so I used just about all of my coal and lit up as much of the island as possible. Day 74 started off with some more breeding of the cows, followed by the murdering of a couple moose rooms, because we really only needed two. After that, we basically just mined the one block for the rest of the day until we faced a very odd mob party. It was for the most part just bees and slime with a couple of phantoms, and like, I felt kind of bad because I was killing a bunch of endangered bees, so that just kind of felt wrong, but like, they were trying to kill me, but like, real talk guys, let, let's protect the bees, lads. Honestly, day 75 ended up being a bit of a waste because I was just kind of messing around with the botany mod and figured at this point, I really didn't have much use for it, so my original plan with it was to have it just farm wood the whole time, but you can't put saplings in there, and you can only put crops, so again, not super helpful. The next two days started off with some unclogging of our iron farm. The one drawback with the, using these single slot cabinets was the fact that when a hopper connected to the cabinet set for iron caught a rose, it would just get stuck and slowly clog up the farm if I didn't clean it out long enough. Fortunately, I'm a full-blown plumber at this point, so you know, that's pretty cool. Like in this clip here, you can see a ton of iron was just stuck behind the rose cabinet, so it's a minor flaw, but nothing that couldn't be managed. After that, I made a platform for our cobblestone generator, and on day 77, forgot to record me actually making the thing, but I mean, it's really not that exciting and outside of that we just mine cobble for the rest of the day also if you are a new patreon supporter and you don't see your names on the signs that's because I already had the clip recorded but don't worry I got you next video day 78 through 84 was a big old chunk of days where I did a whole lot of building for starters we built what was going to be our enchanting room then we made a garage door yeah you know from the intro yeah I was serious about garage doors and the reason I chose to use a garage door is because I just wanted to try something different with one of the mods and I actually liked the way it looked and what was really cool about it was that if I had the you know remote I could make the door open and disappear once I finished the walls inside I placed down the enchanting table and what bookshelves we had at the moment and now just needed to keep farming as much leather as possible until we had enough bookshelves so I went on a mission and killed every single donkey on our island because I knew they had a chance to give me leather and you know I don't think donkeys are classified as sea animals so I probably should have just removed these guys from our aquarium a bit earlier but we did it now and I mean, looking back, that was not very sanitary. I, I can't even lie. Like, imagine going to SeaWorld and seeing a donkey in there. Like, that. something ain't right there. At the end of this set of days, this is what we were looking like. Day 85 started off with the ruthless farming of leather, which was followed by the making of some more bookshelves, and we now had enough for our enchanting room. 
Our first enchant on the netherite saber was sharpness 4 and looting 3, which I was overall happy with. Then our pack sold, we got fortune 3 and efficiency 4, which was just about as good as I could ask for. And outside of enchanting, I basically just made some iron chests, which were basically better versions of standard chests. Crazy, crazy concept, I know. I then put all these under our mob farm and finally had a hopper system all set up, which at this point wasn't super necessary, but I just, the completionist in me wanted to do it. And looking back, I could have done this way long ago. But after that was done i sat and grinded my mob farm quite a bit more burned a bunch of level one enchants on books until i got a good looking enchant for my bow which ended up being power four and i'm breaking three to end off day 86 i used two diamonds to repair our diamond paxel the next two days was a whole lot of mining and like i said earlier when you mine a lot you get to upgrade and we got to upgrade to the desolate phase and after that i actually died to a bunch of these flying casper looking motherfuckers okay and best of all was the fact that my netherite saber flew off the edge of my island because i decided to get rid of the quark mod a couple days ago because the enchanting was stupid so that was terrible since i lost my nice saber i decided to switch up the weapon and i went with the rapier this time and spoiled Spoiler alert, I was not a fan of this thing at all, but we were gonna have to run with it until we made something else with diamond. One thing that came from the midget fight was the fact that one of those ground wizard dudes dropped a totem of undying, which was very much appreciated. A little later, we faced a mob party, which was promptly dealt with. I also decided to replace my rapier with a new saber because I swear this rapier just, it was like hitting someone with tissue paper, which is not a very effective weapon. During another battle with magic lizard man and his gang of midgets, I was forced to use one of my totems of undying and nearly died once again. To kill them this time, I just kept my distance and got some target practice in. And to finish day 88, the desolate phase was now over and we had now entered the end phase. The next day began with me taking every single piece of netherite scrap I had mined and turning them into netherite ingots. Next up, I made three new diamond tools and upgraded them all to netherite and finally made a netherite paxel. And looking back, this was a huge, huge, huge mistake. We'll get into that later with my remaining diamonds I also decided to make a new diamond saber because iron at this point I it was just awful I couldn't live with it anymore after that I enchanted the paxel and saber which was then followed by preparation for our project the next day which would be the aquarium and some more mining days 90 and 91 mainly consisted of me working on the aquarium and I was really just trying my hardest not to break one of the blocks and have some of my fish escape because we already didn't have a ton as it was and I just didn't want to lose more because you, you need fish for aquariums the only really interesting thing that happened Happened while building it was getting sniped by a shulker box which led to a 1v1 quick scopes only battle on rust with the thing which I of course ended up winning please tell me someone gets that reference and by the end of day 91 this is what our aquarium was looking like it was pretty simple but honestly I, I like the simplicity of it and I would have liked to get a bit more detail in there however I did want to make sure I had enough time to finish the end and get to the madness of day 100 all right so why was the netherite paxel a big mistake here's why while seeing if there were any other cool paxels I could get I learned that there's this thing called a 10k paxel which was not only better than my netherite paxel but it also printed diamonds every 10 blocks you mine and I just knew that I had to get this thing and it it just it also looked really cool so it was basically a necessity at this point so yeah over the next four days I left my phone on my left click button on my mouse while sitting at the cobblestone farm and waited until all 10,000 blocks were mined I should mention that before I started mining I made a safe box around the farm so I wouldn't get killed while being afk I spent part of day 96 farming up some diamonds until I had enough for all my new upgrades for starters I made a full set of diamond armor and I gotta say it. I'm sorry if you hate me by now. We're snazzy, man. We had new diamond armor and a fancy 10k printing pack, so you can't tell me I wasn't snazzy at this point. I also forgot that you can make diamond reinforced bows, so I did that. And our last upgrade was making a nice big sword because I unfortunately have to compensate for something that, well, let's just not talk about it. The rest of the day was really just me getting decent enchants on all of our nice new fancy gear. And day 97 was a bit similar to the previous day with some more mob farming and enchanting, followed by a whole lot of mining because we were starting to cut it close on time here fortunately the night of day 97 we got the big spooky message that the end was near which meant we had unlocked the end portal so the next day i wasted no time and popped all the eyes of ender in and it was now time to go and kill donkey's wife from shrek needless to say i was ready i also decided it would be a good idea to make a bunch of fireworks for when we went and found an elytra however before we get into that let's take one last good look at our island before day 100 comes
So once I had all the materials, I straight up cannonballed into the end and began the fight. Like the start of any fight, I went full MLG sniper to take out all the end crystals and then proceeded to snipe the dragon and slap it upside the face with my compensator. I meant to say sword. Whoops. And we of course eventually killed it with really no major issues at all outside of the fact that when the XP fell, it went straight into the portal, which made me a sad waffle. After crying my pain away from losing the XP, I farmed up some ender pearls and set off to find our Elytra. No, no, Elytra. Oh my, I've been saying it wrong again. Oh my god, I've been saying Elytra. It's Elytra. I you guys yelled at me enough. I promise it's Elytra. Wow. I can't believe I just noticed that on day 99. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, it took nearly all of day 99 to find an end city. Once I was there, I was just focused on getting that Elytra. So my main goal was to just ender pearl up through the tower to go as fast as possible. My last ender pearl shot was one I was a bit afraid of because if I missed the boat, I would have to start this all over again, which would have made me very unhappy. Fortunately, though, we hit our first shot, so no issue there. Once on the ship, I ran past the defending shulker and took care of the one standing between me and my elytra. Also, these things look like me when I first get to school in the morning, like just half asleep and like borderline zombie state. Hopefully someone can relate. Once we killed that shulker, we picked up our elytra and started our flight back to the end portal. And we had now officially been inducted into the air force. But here we are, day 100 had finally come upon us and I decided to celebrate in the most American way possible. I made a ton of different kinds of guns and explosives, boys. I, you know, I started out by trying out for phase with my nice no scoping sniper skills and then I began to play with the minigun which was really fun and made us look like an absolute animal. After the minigun I went to the end and discovered the easiest way to kill endermen which was explosives. After that I was literally dive bombing my animal farms with a minigun which made me feel like I just felt like a god man I just felt so cool. And then to end things off I enchanted the guns and well kind of made a mistake right here's the big mistake I've been talking about because my assault rifle was enchanted with incendiary rounds which meant that they were great for starting fires which also meant they weren't great for me because my island is all wood so yeah that's where we're gonna end things off i think and you know what i was really happy with our 100 days i do want to shout out all of my wonderful patreons so thank you to sombre buzz caitlin bone snake magma you guys are awesome and i appreciate you guys just supporting the channel it means a ton if you want these shout outs and to be included in the video be sure to check out my patreon in the description and if you don't want to do that at least join our new community discord we got some awesome people in there so i'm sure you'll love it anyways everyone thank you very much for staying with me for this crazy long video and i will see you in the next one